So I ran a triangular arbitrage experiment this weekend on the Poloniex exchange, essentially on my local machine over here. You can see a bunch of Python code, but what this code is doing is sifting through every single coin on the Poloniex exchange, looking for triangular arbitrage opportunities. And it assumes that you might be holding either USDT, USDC, Bitcoin or Ethereum, the typical coins you might be holding on an exchange at any given time when doing arbitrage. And it tries to trade through assuming that you're holding any one of those coins. So it looks at every opportunity and says, OK, if I have if I'm holding Bitcoin, do I make money? If I'm holding US dollar tether, can I make money here somehow? And it looks at it frontwards, backwards, reverse, forward, all of that kind of stuff. So. It goes through every single coin It was doing that every three seconds. It was popping out some data. And this is what I wanted to make this video about is to show you what the output of that experiment was, because it's important to know how many opportunities there are and how long they last to decide whether or not you want to build a bot for that particular exchange. Now, this takes a lot of hard work. It takes hard work to set up getting that bot working or getting this algorithm working in the first place, let alone every exchange has a slightly different API, etc. as well. But what I wanted to do is show you the results of that. So over here is the data. So I've got this Excel sheet. And essentially what happens is this Python code saves all this data into a file that this Excel sheet then automatically picks up. So I can just right click, refresh this. It will automatically give me that Excel data or that data from what Python was running. And what I've done is I've joined a couple tables together here and I just want to explain this to you very quickly. But, you know, the, the long story short is we're looking at triangular arbitrage opportunities. So if I buy at A and sell at B and buy back at C to get me back to A, do I make a percentage profit? And if you think about it, let's say you can make half a percent and those trades happen frequently and you're making one to two percent a day. Even that is pretty good. Uh, you could make what 5%, let's say you had a 5% day, that would be incredible, depending on the amount of capital that you're trading through. Now, I know that there's a lot of arbitrage bots out there. And I'm not interested in those because they're there for the general public, meaning that the potential reward of those is going to be quite captain limited. So I'm hunting for gold right now. And this is the journey that I want to take you on with me is hunting for this gold. But essentially, this is what this algorithm is doing. So it's looking at the Poloniex exchange. Is there any arbitrage opportunity I can trade just on that one exchange, you know, instantly, very quickly, lightning speed that will get me a result. So in doing that, here are the results. Here are the surface rates. So you can see the timestamp here. This was at 19 minutes past three in the afternoon and 37 seconds, 41. So you can see every three seconds, this is pumping out data and it's saying, I would here I would be holding Ethereum. It's assuming I'm holding Ethereum. I would trade that for Bitcoin. Then I would sell my Bitcoin um, for ZRX. Then I would trade that ZRX back for Ethereum. So I've acquired Ethereum and I started with Ethereum. So that's what this is essentially telling me. It's saying here is where I started at A and I ended up back at A over here. Did I make a profit? Well, yes, here supposedly you would have made a profit. And I'm going to talk about that in more detail shortly. Now, one of the things that's important to note with the algorithm, one of the things it does is it says, OK, here's a list of potential arbitrage opportunities. So let's say that you've got multiple opportunities that could have happened at the same time. Well, which one is it presenting over here? Because it's not presenting all of them. What it's doing is it's looking at where would the maximum opportunity have been and then it's saying, OK, let's assume we traded that maximum opportunity. So I thought I would just point that out really quickly. Now let's get over to the data and show you the results. So this column over here says, is the arbitrage opportunity greater than 0.6? And the reason I chose 0.6 is if you're trading low volume on Poloniex, Poloniex's fees are actually pretty high compared to some other exchanges. So those fees add up and they make it kind of not profitable for you to trade. Let's say you have a 0.2% exchange fee. Well, if you're trading three coins, you're going to need more than 0.6% in profit. So when I look at 0.5%, I can see loads of these over here. I mean, there's just tons of them. But let's just filter on the ones that are over 0.6%. So I'm going to filter only on true. And this ran for about I would say 24 hours worth of runtime. 
uh, in terms of the data, I had to stop it at one point and rerun it uh, again, and then join that data together. But when I do that, I'm seeing opportunities, let's say there were 16 opportunities over here. Now you might get excited about that because it's, you know, it's kind of interesting. If I could have made 0 0.08, 0 0.08, 0 0.06%, and the reason why I'm saying 0.06 is I'm ignoring the first six, assuming I would have paid that in transaction fees. 1% um, over here, that, that's actually really good. But this is one of the things I wanted to point out because now we're gonna really talk about the competition <laughs> and why speed matters because look at how long these opportunities lasted for so this one here actually lasted for about three seconds so i could have made 0 0.08 percent if it's lasting for about three seconds it's likely that the bot that i would have built would have traded that through so this one over here also lasted about three seconds but now look at this one percent opportunity that started with us dollar tether which is actually Kind of a bonus if you're trading through usdt because you're now not open to the volatility of the bitcoin price if you're holding in bitcoin so let's assume you're holding us dollar tether or usdc on an exchange then you know that's actually preferable and this is a great opportunity one percent opportunity came through and didn't last more than three seconds in fact I, because this captures data every three seconds it might have lasted a second meaning that someone out there has some kind of algorithm running to capture these opportunities therefore it's gone and the reason i'm saying that is i ran this for quite a while and i also ran it previously and i was taking note of the same thing whenever the opportunity is really high that opportunity doesn't last more than one snapshot one tick so one has to ask themselves is it worth building a bot for an exchange like this to do triangular arbitrage? And my answer to that is no. And the reason for that is even though you might capture some opportunities, it's your risk to reward. You know, even with a bot, you're gonna have the issue of sometimes if the trade doesn't go through for whatever reason, it could be an issue with the exchange or whatever, and you might lose a percent. So to gain that back, you're gonna need so many trades, etc. It's it doesn't feel worth it if you're going to be taking the risk number one to be in crypto in the first place trading and we us over here who are all part of this community we are risk takers we are in the thick of it here we are in cryptocurrency which is one of the most volatile markets if not the most volatile market you can be in right now so it needs to be worth your time so it's probably not worth setting this up on poloniex now one of the things i did want to mention is if there was a lot of depth in these opportunities, then your exchange fee goes down. Or if you're able to negotiate a better exchange fee with Poloniex, which I haven't tried, but technically you could, or at least you could try, then it might be worth your while. Because look at this, all of these opportunities here at around 0.5%, let's say you're actually just paying 0.3% in exchange fees then you're going to be making 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 all of these opportunity i mean these opportunities are lasting for quite a while because no one else wants to trade them through they're, they're not prioritizing their bot to trade these opportunities because they're they're not that rewarding but if you're able to bring the exchange fee down somehow whether you're trading more size or whether you can negotiate a better deal then actually this would add up to be quite a lot i mean look at how many opportunities there were some of them you know lasted for i don't know three to ten seconds but there's actually quite a lot of opportunities this one over here for example lasted for it started at 1454 it lasted for about a minute so that's really not that bad i mean that's more than ample time to actually trade that opportunity through but again that's assuming that there's a lot of depth there so i just wanted to do a very quick thank you to aiden who commented back on my previous video because i said in that video you know there's seven to eight things that i'm exploring right now in crypto and if you are interested in those please let me know because usually all i want to do is if i find something then i want to bring it to the channel but actually aiden said please do share with us your ideas as well as your view of the opportunities with otcs thanks for the content and that I actually really appreciated that, which is why I'm presenting this video here to you now with this information, because it allows you to see, you know, what, what it's actually like when looking at developing a bot in crypto and how large is the competition right now. Even though the market's quiet, 
those who got there first and have their bots running, etc., they're doing fairly okay. Now, why should I not compete with those bots? One of the things I wanted to mention here is, number one, if somebody's already grabbed that land, I don't want to fight them for it. It's just more energy and time. I want to find land that hasn't been grabbed. Plus, there are many, many, many exchanges out there and I'm not running out of ideas anytime soon. So just going back to the code very quickly, one of the things I wanted to mention here is, let's say you do want to deploy a bot, buy an exchange and trade triangular arbitrage. Because I know some of you are writing bots out there, whether it's arbitrage or whether it's something else, some other trading algorithm. How can you beat the competition? Because speed is a weapon. Now, I recently did an interview with Dean, or in fact, Dean interviewed me on his channel, and I'll put a link to it below this video, where we actually spoke about us, the Crypto Wizards community, which was really kind of cool and interesting. But one of the things I mentioned on that interview is if you're going to deploy a bot, speed is a weapon. So where and how should you deploy that bot? Well, number one, you want to deploy that bot on co-located servers. So you want to deploy that bot in a place where your data or your algorithm, sorry, is very close to the actual servers of that exchange so that the information actually takes less time to get back to you. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the time difference? One second if I'm in Australia versus in Arizona or wherever those servers are? Well, actually, one second can be the difference between someone else getting that trade or you getting that trade. And one second is also a lot in terms of high frequency trading, which is essentially what we're doing over here with triangular arbitrage, it's high frequency. The other thing you might wanna consider is programming using a fix protocol. And you know, fix is essentially the method of transacting in the financial markets in institutions. That's what institutions and exchanges use outside of crypto and crypto exchanges use them as well. So very often, if you want to place a buy order, you can do it through the fix protocol, which is a lot quicker as well. So this is another place where you can save time. Now, the third thing you can do is optimize your code. So you want to make your code as efficient as possible. One of the trade offs I had writing this code is I wanted more functionality. I wanted to be able to set what coins might I be holding, etc. And essentially, if I was to design or build this for someone else, I want them to be able to select what coins they want to trade through, etc. So there's more thinking that the algorithm has to do. Now, if you're going to be more basic and binary and just say, I'm just going to hold this one coin and I wanted to only trade these pairs, you are going to have a faster algorithm, but it's gonna have less variety, so you might be leaving some opportunities on the table. You just need to decide what kind of animal do you wanna be when you're building your algorithm to go and trade these opportunities. So I hope you found this informative, and I look forward to presenting some of the other stuff that I'm working through with you very soon. Take care.